from Roblox's earliest multiplayer games that would hardly reach 5 users playing at once, to current day titans of a game platform with tens of millions of users every day, fighting games have arguably been the biggest genre on Roblox since its inception. Roblox fighting games have evolved tremendously far since, and in today's video I'm going to be discussing how Roblox fighting games have evolved. Roblox games as we know them went officially public in the spring of 2006, and while there were game publishing capabilities, these games could only be played in single player. In June, Roblox's first employee and soon to be creative director, John Shedletsky was hired, and soon he would create the first ever multiplayer Roblox game, a fighting game named Crossroads, in July of that year. Crossroads is a fighting game based on a map split up into four corners where each player is given six weapons and the objective of fighting to survive. Since, the game has been used as a map for a large majority of fighting games on the platform and will continue to reappear throughout the video. For the next month or two, this would be the only Roblox game with multiplayer servers. Shortly after the release of Crossroads, an update would be released allowing the creation of multiplayer servers for user-made games. Many of the earliest user-made games meant for multiplayer servers were fighting games, such as Sunset Plane by the Roblox user Koopa, created in November of 2006, and two now lost fighting games, Thunderbirds and the Red Raiders by the user Freddy, and Rebel Wars by Matty Green Bay. Both of these are fighting games created in October and November of 2006, very early on in Roblox's life, and only have a minimal amount of screenshots left to prove that they existed, and are still important games, as they were some of the earliest multiplayer fighting games on Roblox. It was also around this time that a Roblox user named Leave built the Doomspire structure and published it in the Roblox free model section. We'll keep this in mind for later. Another early fighting game was Mustafar by Stealth Pilot, created sometime around September 2006. This is a Star Wars themed brick battle place and was the lava map featured in the first ever Roblox trailer in November that year. Moving into 2007, we start off the year with two classic Roblox fighting games. Sword Fight on the Heights was created by Shedletsky in April 2007, the same creator who had created Crossroads less than a year prior. This was the first sword fighting game on Roblox as games like Crossroads did not include a sword weapon. The game takes place on a set of floating structures and in later versions of the game, notably Sword Fight on Heights 4 released a few years later, variations of the sword can be found around the map with their own advantages and perks. Since both the original and fourth Sword Fight on the Heights games have racked up millions of plays and still maintain active player bases to this day. In June 2007, the creation of multiplayer Capture the Flag games was promoted and encouraged by a Roblox blog post. This would lead to an increase in the output of Capture the Flag based PvP games on Roblox. Ultimate Paintball, created by the developer Miked in June of 2007, was a popular Capture the Flag game, where each player was assigned to one of two teams and given paintball guns. It ended up becoming the most popular Roblox game for almost two years, and was the first game on the platform to hit a million visits. By today's standards, this game is quite bare bones and fully broken now, but in 2007, the game was revolutionary. In July that year, the Roblox staff held a tournament on the game, which led to the creation of these five visors. Towards the end of the summer of 2007, a noticeable increase in the usage of the Doomspire model I mentioned earlier happened. A lot of these were fighting games, and this later evolved into what we now know as Doomspire Brick Battle. Many copies and variations of some sort of four-way Doomspire battle game would pop up over the next few years, with the most popular to date being g Fink's version released in 2017, with over 800 million visits. You were given the classic set of Brick Battle weapons, and the objective to knock down all of the other team's Doomspire spires and secure yours. Some of the earliest Roblox games with guns in them were created around this time. A lot of the gun models from around this time were modified versions of Shedletsky's paintball gun which was made a few months prior. This is what a pistol in the game Dead Roblox Rising by Servant looked like. This was October 2007, by the way. An honorable mention for 2007 is Pirates of the Robloxian by Stealth Pilot, which was a popular Roblox fighting game surrounding pirates and blowing up the other team's ships with cannons. It garnered about 200,000 visits before being closed down sometime in the mid-2010s. Some early aerial combat-based games were also created around this time, which deserves some sort of mention, as this style of Roblox fighting game would become quite popular in the following years. In 2008, guns would get slightly better with the advent of meshes. 
It's still better than this though. Fast forward to March 2008 when Clockwork, a former Roblox intern, creates a game named Classic Op Map. The game gives you a sword, trowel, and a sniper rifle model that Clockwork was working on. The game is quite basic and now entirely broken, but it's quite impressive considering it was made so early on in Roblox's history. A month later in April, Connix and Clockwork teamed up to create Kiseki CTF, considered by many to be the best Roblox fighting game up until that point. Kiseki was a class-based capture the flag game with special abilities, 13 classes to choose from, and a bunch of weapons. And since Clockwork worked on the game, it had many custom meshes and custom audio files included, which regular users weren't allowed to upload at the time. As a result of this, the sounds and meshes uploaded for usage in the game were widely used by normal Roblox users. These include the fresh meat voice clip used when a player was killed with a chainsaw, the gun sounds used which were stolen from the 2002 shooter game Solda, and multiple gun meshes which were used in popular free models such as the best gun in Robloxia and dual Vulcan chain guns. These models both have tens of thousands of favorites. Despite the original game no longer functioning, the legacy of the game is quite clear with some of its assets and influence still being shown in Roblox today. In March, a Roblox user named Drewsome B would create what would soon become the most popular game on the platform, Heli Wars. Heli Wars Desert Attack was a fighting game between two military teams named the Green and Desert teams respectively. This one gives each player a multitude of weapons upon spawning, and this game was cool because it had helicopters. In 2008, helicopters were not yet invented. In the latter half of 2008, the game would start to gain traction, and by the end of 2009, it had surpassed Mike's Ultimate Paintball as Roblox's most popular game. In July 2008, what's largely considered to be the first major anime-based fighting game was created by a developer named Snake World. The game was called Naruto Land of the Ninja. While the game only has 400,000 visits, the game was quite popular in its prime, as we can see from this 2011 footage of the game, where the server is quite full. Full, but the game is entirely broken and unplayable as of 2023. The primary weapon tool in this game doesn't work anymore, but would switch between one of six weapons depending on what button you pressed. Since anime fighting games have become one of the largest subgenre of Roblox games on the platform, which I'll talk about later in the video. In November 2008, fighting games surrounding pirates would come into the spotlight yet again, with the Roblox developer Wingman 8 creating the game Galleons. This is another game where you blow up the other team's ships with giant cannons. This time Time, it's less blocky. 2009 was an important year for the Roblox fighting game genre. In June, an already notable developer named Stickmaster Luke would release Fencing, a game where you go on this black platform and fight with these cool little saber tools. Since the game has kept a small but active player base, which is mostly exploiters. Only six months prior, Stickmaster Luke created The Underground War, a capture the flag game where two teams dig underground tunnels to enter the other team's base and take their flag. The game is now broken, but when it was still open and working, it was an insanely popular game, having over 20 million visits as of 2023. Only a month after Fencing's creation, a popular fighting game named Zeppelin Battle would be published. Zeppelin Battle is an aerial-based combat game on Roblox with two teams, the Patrol and the Pirates. In the game, there are two game modes, Classic and Raid, unless you're playing the remake version, which has more. The goal of Classic mode is to sink the enemy Zeppelin, and in Raid mode, the Pirates have to protect their Zeppelin as it goes towards the Patrol's harbor, and the Patrol team has to sink the Zeppelin. While the game's creation date says 2008, it was actually a different place until the summer of 2009, when it actually became Zeppelin Battle. In 2020, a popular recreation of the game by Roblox developer LolKiller101, alongside multiple contributors, would be created named Zeppelin Wars, with fully revamped scripting and design and more content. This new game remake has since garnered nearly 50 million visits. Base Wars is a military-style fighting game that was published to Roblox in November 2009 by Dark886. In the game, you capture points and flags from the other team in the hopes of winning. There is a wide variety of vehicles, weapons, and after almost 14 years, the game still regularly receives updates. In 2012, this game was not only nominated User's Choice Game of the Year at the Roblox Game Conference 2012, but in September that year, it became the most played game on Roblox. This was true for two years until it got passed up in October 2014 by a game that was created a month later named Call of Robloxia 5. Call of Robloxia 5 is a game that was created by the future creator 
leader of Phantom Forces in December 2009. The game, obvious from the title, is a Roblox version of Call of Duty. It was even named Call of Duty 5 until early 2011. The game revolves around two team matches where players can fight with a wide variety of weapons. There were four game modes, Elimination, Capture the Flag, Domination, and Team Deathmatch. Much like Base Wars, this game's popularity peaked in the mid-2010s despite being created in 2009. Since I accidentally edited these sections of the video out of order, the last game I'll talk about for 2009 is Wingman 8's Armored Patrol, which was officially released in April that year. Armored Patrol, like many other popular fighting games from this era on Roblox, is another military-style capture-the-flag fighting game between two teams that have to conquer bases in a blocky scenery. This game was considered as revolutionary as it was for its time due to its advanced vehicles and combat. In 2018, Armored Patrol broke due to the aging of its scripts, and it was deemed unplayable and made inactive. Since, multiple developers have come forward to make the game playable again with their own twist to the game, but uh... Anyway, on to 2010. Now that it's 2010, let's take a quick moment to see how weapon models have evolved and what stage of Roblox's evolution we're at. Weapons have gone from this, to this, to this, and to this. Gear items are in their wow, this is cool, not sure what they're used for though, phase, turbo and outrageous builders club memberships, GUIs, different materials in Roblox Studio, groups, smoke, and other particles, vehicle seats, and more have since been added. We also no longer have circle studs and they have been given a square shape. As a whole, Roblox's developers have gotten both better at designing games and scripting in part to Roblox's learning resources. In only four years, Roblox is massively evolved Evolved, and we're not even halfway done yet. Despite everything I just said though, 2010 to 2012 were pretty dead years regarding the evolution of fighting games and new fighting games being released on Roblox. By now, the fighting games on Roblox's front page were mainly the older ones released in 2008 or 2009, with my only game for 2010 being the Gamer 101 Sword Fighting Tournament. This game is exactly what it sounds like, a sword fighting tournament where two players will be teleported into the arena with swords at a certain time and fight for points that they can upgrade their swords with. Since its release, the game has garnered over 45 million visits and won top earning game at the 2013 Roblox BloxCon. <laughs> Until this point, Roblox users could upload textures and sound effects directly into their place files using a base64 encoding system, instead of uploading them to the website. However, this led to larger place file sizes and excessive server costs on Roblox's end. In May 2008, direct support for these custom assets encoded in base64 was discontinued, though there were ways for players to sneak in their own custom meshes. But importing Team Fortress 2 weapons when people could barely run Windows Vista by itself was costly of the player's computer's resources. This was patched in 2010 and for the next three years custom sound was not available, and it took even longer for player made meshes to be re-added. User made textures were already introduced in 2008 with decals, and in 2007 people were using t-shirt images as textures. Keep in mind that while all of this was going on, admins were freely allowed to upload textures, sounds, and meshes to the website, and had been doing so since as far back as 2006 and 2007. 2011 was a better year than 2010 for Roblox fighting games and Roblox in general. In May 2011, the Roblox developer Daxter33 released Paintball. Daxter's Paintball was a popular team-based fighting game with paintball guns. In only four years, we could even see paintball fighting games have majorly evolved. As in comparison to Ultimate Paintball, which was the most popular Roblox game at one point, Daxter's Paintball has 9 different kinds of paintball guns, 7 game modes, 11 maps, and more. For most of 2013, Paintball was Roblox's second most played game. A month later in June, Saranok and Quenty, two already well-known Roblox users, created Catalog Heaven. The original purpose of the game was to try out a variety of items from the catalog before purchasing them, but the main selling point that kept bringing people back was the feature to battle other players using the catalog's gears. It was because of this feature that, from 2012 to 2016, this game would remain insanely popular. 
At the start of 2012, a portion of the Roblox staff team, under the account Games, created two fighting games, the first of which was Base Wars FPS, unrelated to Dark 886's game of the almost same name. In Base Wars FPS, your goal is to capture all of the map's control points and rack up points. This game was special because if your team won a match, you would receive the red or blue Base Wars paintball mask hat, and the game was an early adapter of Roblox's terrain tools. Only two months later, a promising FPS game named Authority, created by Logitech 101 and Spooky Fox, would be published. Authority was a team deathmatch FPS game between players on one of two teams, the Enforcement or Criminals. Once he has garnered 3,500 points, the game would reset. However, the game has since broken, and the account holding the place has been terminated, meaning this is probably for good. Which kinda sucks because not only was it a promising game for its time, but it was kinda like a time capsule for the state of FPS games on Roblox. In July, Gus Manic and Zolarketh would release Apocalypse Rising, a survival game based on DayZ, a mod for the game Arma 2, where players are dropped into a large open map made up of cities and fields with resources scattered about, with the main goal of surviving zombies and any other players out to kill you and take your resources. In the game, there is an assortment of healing items and weapons that you can use to increase your chance of survival. I wasn't originally intending on including any zombie games to the list, but I feel it should be added not only because this game was incredibly influential to future Roblox games, but you're more likely to die in this game to another player than a zombie anyways. For a lot of reasons, this game was remarkably important and influential. For a game released in 2012, its scripting and building were far ahead of its time. This game won multiple awards at Roblox's 2013 BloxCon event, and a sequel was released a few years after the original's release. Apocalypse Rising also had an advanced character creation menu, which most games from this era did not have. As of 2023, Apocalypse Rising, the first, has over 230 million visits and 1.4 million favorites. Black Magic, released in October 2012 by developer QAEO, was a class-based Roblox fighting game with emphasis on magic. The game was popular throughout 2014 to 2016 for its advanced combat, class and weapon variety, and boss fights. It was also one of the first of its kind and definitely stood out against Roblox's often bland fighting games, which kept it simple. A few years later, a sequel was published with more advanced everything, and the original was closed. Despite the original no longer being playable and its sequel being infinitely more popular, it was very influential and ahead of its time in Roblox fighting game terms. In November, the Roblox staff team created the second of two fighting games listed under the account Games, named Roblox Battle. This is a remastered version of the classic brick battle formula with direct inclusion of maps like Crossroads, with enhanced weapons, new game modes, and more. It was pretty popular for its time and is definitely worth mentioning because we have now gotten to the point in Roblox fighting game history where we are remastering old games. 2013 was a very dead year for Roblox fighting games, but an important year for Roblox as a platform. 2013 is when things like dynamic lighting, a wide variety of new materials, and custom audio uploading were introduced, making any kind of Roblox game infinitely better. People were playing the stuff that was made a few years ago at this point, which is evident in videos like this where all of the games mentioned came out in 2012 or before. In 2014, a Lithuanian Roblox developer named Lolaris would dominate the front page of the website with two fighting games that he released that year. The first game is Mad Murderer, released in April of that year. In Mad Murderer, one person in the lobby is chosen as a murderer, tasked with killing everyone, one is selected as a sheriff, tasked with killing the murderer, and the rest have to survive the round. A lot of games on Roblox hold the same formula, such as Murder Mystery 2 by Nicholas, created that same year, which now has almost 10 billion visits. Imagine if you beat a Crash Bandicoot level but you missed 9.6 billion boxes. The 2014 version, its sequel, and Mad Murderer X, released in 2021, have an accumulated total of 82 million visits as of 2023. Strife is a game that was created by Fenrir in September 2014, where you choose from over 20 classes and tell port to one of five maps and fight to the death. On both versions of the game, it holds just about 12 million visits and was majorly affected by the filtering enabled update, which I'll talk about in larger detail later, and hasn't received many updates since. 
two months later in November, Lolaris would create Mad Paintball, a paintball FPS game on Roblox with three different game modes. It's funny comparing something like Ultimate Paintball to Mad Paintball, or even Daxter's Paintball from only two years earlier, to Mad Paintball, as there are vast increases in quality between them. From 2014 to 2016, Mad Paintball and its sequel, Mad Paintball 2, were very popular. They eventually ran their course, however, as the first Mad Paintball had broken, and the second stopped receiving updates. Both games combined hold over 77 million visits. In 2015, games would see a great increase in quality. Roblox released an update that allowed developers to put their games under groups. In this era of Roblox, the games on the platform go from very clunky but playable to slightly less clunky but even more playable. Around this era, custom mesh uploading has been re-added to Roblox and plugins for Roblox Studio are released. The first game to talk about for 2015 is Arsenal, an FPS game with a mishmash of many different PvP game modes released by Rolf in August 2015. The main selling point of the game is its extremely large weapon variety, hence the name Arsenal, with there being over 145 weapons in the game as of 2023. Arsenal has seen many changes since its initial release, which can be seen when comparing the first ever Arsenal video, recorded in September 2015, to what the game is today. This is the most popular Roblox game on the list so far, with over 4.5 billion visits. By now, it's been a few years since this game's peak in popularity, and yet it still gets tens of thousands of players daily, which is a true testament to how well the Roblox community has received it. Just about a month later, the creator of Call of Robloxia 5, an FPS game, game that was widely praised by the Roblox community for its advanced scripting and weapon work only a few years ago, created a game called Phantom Forces under the group Stylist Studios. Phantom Forces is a team-based FPS game on Roblox described by its creator during an interview as a mishmash of many modern-day FPS games. There are six game modes, all of which include combat between the Phantom and Ghost teams. Much like Arsenal, this game has a lot of weapons, clocking in at just under 200 unlockable weapons in the game. It was also around the creation of Phantom Forces and Arsenal that things like unlockable cosmetics for your weapons became a mainstay in Roblox FPS games. Overall, Phantom Forces is a beloved game to the general Roblox community having over 1.4 billion visits after 8 years. It's nearly been a decade since its release and it's still often referred to as one of Roblox's best FPS games ever. 2016 and 2017 were very, very slow years for the history of fighting games. Roblox had also just turned 10 years old. Throughout these years, games like Phantom Forces were the most played FPS games on Roblox. Back to anime fighting games on Roblox, Snake World, a developer I mentioned earlier, released a game called DBZ Final Stand in November of 2016. This is a now very popular Roblox game based on the Dragon Ball universe where you create a character and fight players and bosses with it, collecting EXP along the way. Anime fighting games would become one of Roblox's largest game subgenres later on, and Dragon Ball Z Final Stand was certainly a catalyst for it. The only game to be released in 2017 that I'll be talking about today is Fears' Knife Ability Test, or CAT for short. CAT is a hodgepodge of many different game modes where you're given a knife and a gun and told not to die, basically. Despite the game not receiving updates much anymore, the game still holds an active player base and has racked up over a billion visits. Now onto 2018, a huge year for Roblox's fighting games. In October 2016, a user named Lightning Splash released a demo for a wacky fighting game test named Ragdoll Universe. Back then, it spawned you on basic grassy terrain and allowed you to punch other players with a fly time counter in the corner. For the next two years, it would be closed, with the only footage of its earliest version being this video. In February 2018, Lightning Splash would reopen the game under the name Ragdoll Mayhem with advanced weapons being added, which would spawn around the map as you fought, and the old maps were now entirely rebuilt and redecorated. Soon after, after, the game was renamed back to Ragdoll Universe and two modes were added named Deathmatch and Endless. The game was vastly well received for its interesting concept of fighting with these wacky ragdoll physics, polished building, and advanced weapons and scripting work. L Splash would take the skills learnt and built upon during Ragdoll Universe's development cycle and become tenfold more famous, making bigger and better Roblox projects in the future.
In July 2018, we see a huge catalyst in the ongoing trend of Roblox fighting games with over-the-top gore, that being Solid Calibur's Neighborhood War, a three-way team fighting game where players battle in a war-torn neighborhood with a myriad of different weapons. At some point, Roblox started to crack down on games with extremely violent content, causing Neighborhood War's creator to turn off the bloody effects by default. Since this game has maintained an active player base and has well over 36 million visits, in 2018, Roblox released an update that broke thousands of Roblox games by forcing all Roblox games that have filtering enabled on, which made it so any modifications done on a player's client would not affect the server to prevent exploiters and hackers. This broke a lot of old vehicles and weapon scripts and caused many to be frustrated with Roblox. Following the rise in popularity of Fortnite, multiple Battle Royale games would become incredibly popular on Roblox, such as Island Royale and Strucid, which were both created in 2018, and both have almost half a billion visits. Our last game for 2018 is A Bizarre Day, a fighting game based on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. In the game, you pick up arrows around the map that will give you stands with their own unique abilities and you're tasked to fight other players with them. It's 2019 now, and any indication of Roblox being another second-rate online social game like many other games from its era has vanished. With 1 billion users registered, Roblox has officially blossomed into a flourishing platform for expressing creativity. The first game released in 2019 that I'll be talking about is Blocks Fruits, a One Piece inspired fighting game that Roblox game studio Gamer Robot Incorporated released in January that year, where you fight on the Marine or Pirates team. The name of the game comes from the Blocks Fruits item, which is collected and used in battles with other players. Blocks Fruits is the most popular fighting game on Roblox by far, with over 10 billion visits, making it the fifth most popular Roblox game, period. In May, a Roblox game studio named Team Rudiment mentality released Bad Business, a Roblox FPS game. The game is known for its smooth movement and distinct style, especially in character customization, straying far away from the average Roblox game's look. The game was mostly influenced by Call of Duty. For just about every distinct era on Roblox, we have at least one remake of Crossroads with more and more up-to-the-minute scripting and design. In 2019, a developer named Ender1709 released Mortem Metallum, a remake of Crossroads with much higher quality weapons. This game used to feature very violent and gory effects, which caused the game to be put under review by a Roblox moderator at some point. Your Bizarre Adventure is another fighting game based on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, similar to a Bizarre Day in concept mentioned previously, but different in execution. You obtain stands and fight different players. Your Bizarre Adventure also overtook a Bizarre Day as the most popular JoJo's Bizarre Adventure related game on Roblox. In 2020, I believe the final phase of the development of Roblox fighting games began. Criminality is a fighting game that takes place in a city sector named Sector 07. Described by the own game's description as hot style and resulting in it being exiled from civilized society. In the game, you roam around the city and fight other players with an assortment of weapons. The game was in an alpha state until October 2020 when it was officially released, and was paid access until 2022, costing 250 robux to play. Criminality was a part of a wave of games based in neighborhoods overrun by crime or gang violence, including games like The Streets in the Hood which have hundreds of millions of visits, even sometimes billions. Five months later, in May 2020, the game Combat Warriors was released, a Roblox game where you fight other players with a variety of melee and ranged weapons with a greater emphasis on melee weapons. Much like Neighborhood War and Mortem Metallum, this game is extensively gory, directly taking inspiration from the latter in terms of its violent content. Since, Combat Warriors has developed a cult fanbase and has been played nearly 600 million times. An honorable mention for 2020 that shows how far we've come in Roblox fighting games evolution is NC Software's Hell Reaver Arena. While not being influential per se, this game certainly shows how much Roblox fighting games have improved on the visual end and in the weapon development department. A few games were published to Roblox around the early 2020s and late 2010s, including Realistic Hood Gun Test and Games Unite Testing Place, both of which are work in progress fighting games with state of the art weapon models and building, which truly demonstrate how far weapons by itself have come. 
Nearing the end of the summer in 2020, randomizer games, usually with comical tones, started to become popular on Roblox. Some examples include Item Asylum, Randomizer, and Infinite Welfare. The first and last in particular stand out quite far from the majority of Roblox FPS games that take themselves quite seriously. These games usually start you out with three randomized weapons out of a large pool of options and throw you into an arena to fight against other players with those weapons. 2021 is the last year to see crucial checkpoints in the history of Roblox fighting games, closest to their most up-to-the-minute form. The first game to talk about for 2021 is Zoe by Voldex, a samurai-themed fighting game set in a mountainous area in Japan where you fight others with various melee weapons. In only two years, Zoe has garnered a cult fanbase and has been played over 360 million times. Around this time, a Roblox FPS game named Aimblox was released by Aim Lab, a real-world company that specializes in training your aim. The game itself is an FPS game that offers you a wide arsenal of weapons and a mixture of different PvP game modes, and has garnered nearly 200 million visits since its creation in May 2021. Bed Wars by Easy Games, released in May 2021, is one of Roblox's most popular fighting games, a Roblox recreation of the Minecraft game mode of the same name. The goal of the game is to be the last standing team with an intact bed at your base and break other teams' beds, which prevents them from respawning again and if that team dies, they're out of the game. You can buy an assortment of items from the shopkeeper to protect your bed and attack other players. Since its creation, it has been played nearly 6 billion times. One of 2021's most popular Roblox fighting games was Slap Battles by Tencel, a game where you slap other players with these big gloves. You can get different kinds of gloves which have their own special abilities and quirks. This game has become highly popular as it has been played more than 700 million times on Roblox. Another honorable mention for a 2021 Roblox fighting game and my last game for the year is Studio Origami Super Scuffle, a free-for-all PvP game where you fight with weapons found around the map. I particularly love this game for its cartoonish art style and charm, okay. and I feel this game is very underrated as it only has half a million visits. Since 2022 is newly over, no Roblox fighting games released that year have had the time to become popular and influence further games. A recent Roblox fighting game I've seen with genuine potential is Blackout's Remaster, which is still in development. Blackout was a game quite similar to the streets and criminality before it was taken down from Roblox. Roblox. Since, its original creators have been hard at work fine-tuning a remake of the game, and the sneak peeks and teasers that they've posted on social media look exceptionally polished. To recap, fighting games started in 2006 and were just copying Shedletsky. People tried making guns and they sucked, but no one really cared. One admin made an actually decent FPS game for its time and it got copied over and over. User-made fighting games started to get kinda decent around 2011 to 2013. Roblox re-implemented implemented user-made sounds and meshes in 2013-15 which heavily benefited Roblox developers. Guns and other weapons got way better. People started to get really invested in coding and animating weapons in 2016 onward. Around this time, people started to make way better fighting games. And now that it's the 2020s, fighting games now have billions of visits and are hugely polished in comparison to the older fighting games on the same platform. On Roblox, fighting games can usually be put into one of nine different categories. Brick Battle, a classic free-for-all style of Roblox fighting game pioneered in 2006 where the only goal is collecting kills, FPS games like Aim Blocks and Phantom Forces, anime fighting games like Blocks Fruits and Dragon Ball Z Final Stand, war games like Armored Patrol, games like Criminality in the Hood, open world styled fighting games like Apocalypse Rising, the gory ones like Combat Warriors and Neighborhood War, sword fighting games like Sword on the Heights, Zoe, and Sword Fighting Tournament, and the weird ones like Item Asylum and Slap Battles. Now, I've completed the trilogy of history videos on Roblox's most notable game genres. In just about half an hour, I've summarized how fighting games, weapon models, FPS games, and the development of such on Roblox have gone from these clunky little physics tests to these polished and detailed PvP experiences that tens of thousands of users spend time playing every day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, do things you do after finishing a video you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Hello Robloxians, it would be pretty cool if you guys subscribe to the YouTuber Toasted Cherry.